Hibi is back again, designing dubs, and this is the Hibi R6. Sounds familiar, right? But this is the third generation. I have reviewed the Hibi R6 first generation in the past, but I did not have the chance to review the second generation. So let's see how much of an improvement we have if we go from the first generation to the third generation directly. Also, we will compare this to other dubs in the market around the 500 US dollars price point, which it is currently selling at. So let's get to it. Hibi is the kind of company that makes either one of two products. They either make something that is incredibly powerful, versatile and can do basically everything or something that can do basically just one thing but really good. That was the situation with Hibi RS2, it could play music but it played it really well having an air-to-air -air DAC. And now we have the R6, the third generation which is a follow-up to the R6 first generation which was a very versatile DAC with a ton of abilities for the date it was released. The shape has nothing to do with the R6 first generation, it is very different. It has a volume wheel now. <laughs> Hibi probably noticed that this is quite popular with brands like Ibeso having it in their DX170 and even few are having volume wheels. So they decided to have a volume wheel, which is right at the top. That is pretty cool. But besides that, we have one micro SD slot, which can be used for cards up to two terabytes of storage. We have four outputs at the bottom, but only two of them are headphone outputs. We have a 4.4 millimeter balanced output and a 3.5 millimeter single-ended output. We have a type C input also used for charging and Hibi Air 6 third generation also has fast charging, although it still charges quite slowly. It is not 120 watts of charge like I have on my smartphone on the Motorola Edge 30 Ultra. But anyways, we also have lineouts, a balanced lineout in the 4.5 millimeter format and the lineout in the 3.5 single ended format. The thing about this is that it has buttons on the side for playback and the power button and it has a beautiful aqua color LED light that shows when it is working. Other than that, it is basically a smartphone. It has a large display, beautiful back and as you can see, Mine is actually in the silicon case, so I remove that now. The dab looks much better in its original color, but the problem is that I feel scratching it. It has screen protector on the back and on the front because the back is made of glass. It looks much better without the screen protector, but I don't have the courage of keeping it without it because I, I'm really allergic to having scratches on my products. And this one is going to scratch easily, I can tell it already. Even, in fact, the screen protector on the front already has one scratch and that it can scratch. One thing that you will notice while using it, the only complaint I have about it, the entire video, is going to be about the volume wheel. Without the silicon case, the volume wheel is somewhat easy accessible, somewhat understandably okay to use. With the silicon case on, when you have this on, it is impossible to access the volume wheel. It takes two fingers and a lot of force to turn. That won't damage the volume wheel and I'm happy to see that they included a good amount of protection to the volume wheel because that is one of the things that is complicated to replace if it gets damaged. But man, it is frustrating to adjust the volume if you are on the go and I've used it on the go. It is a portable player. You are supposed to use it on the go. This is the main way I'm using. It has this beautiful silver color but there are multiple colors available out there and uh, it has USB dock function which works without delay. I'm happy to report on that. Some more recent apps had some delay. Even HBRS2 had some delay sometimes, although it was minimal. Shining M3 Ultra has some delay and it is situational for some reason. It has sometimes some delay and other times it doesn't have any delay. This one has zero delay as far as I can tell. No delay. That is nice. It is running a basic version of Android. You don't have to worry too much. It is basically Android. It uses gestures instead of a navigation bar and I've grown accustomed to using gestures. So swiping from the bottom up will close whatever you are having open, which is really useful. Then swiping from the left or from the right is like a back key. <laughs> you don't need more. Ah, you can swipe from the bottom and hold to see what you have currently open. The unit has a Snapdragon 665 CPU, which is very good for a DAP or a digital music player. It comes with four gigabytes of RAM, which is enough for a music player. You are not supposed to have too much RAM because you won't be gaming on this. It has 64 gigabytes of ROM or internal memory, which can be used to store files for Tidal offline and such. It has a 4,500 milliampers internal battery, which offers up to about nine hours of battery life if you are listening at moderate volumes or a bit lower if you are using the balanced output. It takes around two hours to charge fully and it has a screen resolution of 1280 by 720 which is basically 
above retina for a 5 inch display. Basically, it is enough so that you don't see the individual pixels, which I actually can see. Even looking at it up close, I can see the individual pictures. It comes with Android 12, which is the same as my smartphone. So it is very modern, very recent. It doesn't come with an old Android version like some other dubs on the market. And it has an AS9038Q2M ASS chip in dual configuration. So each channel gets its own DAC, so you get the best sound quality possible. In audio, we have a filter setting, which is basically useless. It doesn't affect the sound too much. But we have an amplifier operation, which can be switched between class A and class AB. Class A sounds considerably better, but it will make the unit run a bit warmer. It doesn't run hot to the touch, like for me it's more than okay, but it can be warm to the touch. And then there is class AB, which consumes less power and it is less warm to the touch. I would keep it in class A given that you have the option and if you are not constrained by the battery life. We have gain, which can be set between low, middle and high. I have noticed no extra noise using the high gain, but once again, I always stick to high gain to get the best overall dynamic and to get the best overall volume because I tend to listen quite loud. We have MQA decoder and it can decode and unfold and everything MQA related up to 16x. I, I don't really use a lot of MQA, so I think that MQA is awesome once you have Tidal, but if you don't have Tidal, MQA MQA is not something to stretch for. So if you don't get it via Tidal, if you don't use Tidal, downloading your own MQA files, I don't even know if it is possible to download them, is not worth the effort. With Tidal it is cool, like you have the option to listen to a better mastered version of your music, but once again, that is something that it's up to you. It does have MQA in case you want it. And we also have Miseb or Magic Sound 8 Ball, which is like a sorcery thing <laughs> designed by Hibi. It is basically a way to color the sound, to EQ the sound without knowing what EQ does. So we have those options. For example, we can make the sound overall warmer or brighter. We can make it deeper or lighter in the bass extension. We can make the bass faster or thumpier. We can make the musical notes thicker or crisper. We can make the voices forwarder or recessed. We can make the sibilance crisper or softer. And we can make the air softer or crisper. Basically, it can enhance certain effects that are explained, which is really cool. This is one of the main reasons you should be using one of those Hibi dubs. The Mseb is really good and really effective at providing a high quality equalizer without you reading what an equalizer does. So you can simply enjoy it. You can install any other dubs since it comes with Google Play and it is official running, so you don't have to worry about about side loading apps, you don't have to worry about the app version or getting logged out of your Tidal account or other accounts because of app version inconsistencies. The music player is the Hibi Music, which is one of the best music players on the market at the moment. It can also work with Ibasos Mango app and with basically every other music player. This is the beauty of Android. You can install anything you want. You can even watch movies if you don't find it too small. I find it very small. It is a bit smaller than my smartphone. So as you can see, my smartphone is a bit larger and would make more sense for watching videos. But you can watch movies on it, you can play games, you can do basically everything you may desire. The Music Player app has shuffle, has replay game support, has true gapless playback, and I currently have a 512 gigabytes micro SD card loaded and it loads instantly. Everything is very smooth. It doesn't have a fast refresh rate screen as far as I know, but it is very good in color and it looks pretty cool. Of course, the most important aspect of a DAP is basically the sound because everything else can be explained in a few words, but how it sounds is a very long story. And with Hibi R6, the third generation, the sound is incredibly surprising. I was not expecting it to be any special. Like I, I was thinking to myself, yeah, it's going to be okay. How good can it be? Well, first off, it exceeds the original R6 by a wide margin. It has a lower background noise and a lower hissing floor. It doesn't really have much hissing, so it has a lower output impedance, even over the balanced output. It has a much cleaner, much deeper sound with better sub bass, a wider sound stage, a deeper sound stage and better instrument separation. At the same time, it has better dynamics and better overall resolution. I can easily hear all of those things with headphones like the OLS 5X and I think it is really, really well done in sound. I think that the sound is really beautiful. It's like, it sounds a bit better than the Ibeso DX170 if you like a more forward sound. The Ibeso DX170 is a bit more laid back. The bass is deeper on the Ibeso, while the treble is a bit more forward on the Hibi R6 third generation. It's like this one is a bit brighter, a bit more resolute. Ibeso is a bit deeper and a bit smoother, which makes it more relaxing. The Hibi R6 
six per generation is a bit brighter and that is actually a good thing if you have smoother and if you have more relaxing sounding headphones the navigation buttons works as you would expect the bottom button goes forward the top one goes backward and the middle one is place or pause the silicon case is a really nice add-on you need the silicon case to keep it scratch free and to keep this beautiful boy in shape but at the same time since it impedes the usage of the volume wheel so much i think that i would rather at some point replace the screen protector on the back and on the front and just use it without because i want to have access to the volume wheel the volume is in steps from 0 to 100 i have found myself using it below 100 that 100 it is quite loud it is able to drive hyphen hsa 1000 version 2 quite well with quite a lot of dynamic and with quite a lot of impact although in theory it has a lower driving power than the hebe r6 second generation i was looking at the technical data and this one doesn't have as much driving power at least on paper that being said the driving power can be used up to the maximum which is really cool because some players have a ton of driving power but starts distorting before you reach the maximum volume which makes the driving power useless i need to be able to use it too say that it has the driving power. Hebe R6 third generation is a really pleasing to use DAP, is like really pleasing. It even has Hebe Cast. Of course, you can install Tidal, Spotify and everything else. It is an Android app. It is not one of those more limited system DAPs like Hebe RS2 was. RS2 was a very limited DAP, but which had a much smoother, much thicker and warmer sound as it has an R2R DAP. Hebe R6 version 3 pairs well even with the Hyphemans Vanar high-end pair of EMs, also with the Ditoa Perpetua, another EM that I love to beats, and with the unique melody Maven Pro. I have noticed no background hissing while using it with those, and I think that generally it has a very pleasing, dynamic and impactful sound. I think that it is better than Hibis RS2, especially if you want a more versatile DAP, so I would recommend it above the Hibi RS version 2. I would not place it above iBase ODX 170 necessarily, but it is more resolute and has a bit more treble sparkle, but it has a slightly shallower bass, so if you prefer more bass, iBase ODX 170 might be a better option for you. It is more similar in the overall tuning to iBase or DX140 than the DX170 if you heard the DX240. All in all, I will be posting a full written review where I'll be comparing it more in depth with other dubs, doing more pairings and talking more about it. I hope you have enjoyed the video. Don't forget to share the video, like the video and subscribe to the channel if you want to help me. I also have a PayPal link in the video description. I will leave links if you want to purchase Hebe R6 version 3. I thank you so much for watching and we'll see each other really soon. Bye bye.